हेलो एवरीबॉडी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद द चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ऑफ ए सी सी एफ टू मैनेजमेंट अकाउंटिंग एंड द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज अकाउंटिंग फॉर मटीरियल्स सो दिस इज़ वेर योर एक्चुअल मैनेजमेंट अकाउंटिंग स्टार्ट्स सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड बिफोर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियोज इन केस यू हैवेंट वॉच दैम येट दैन हैव लिंक इट इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो ऑल्सो इफ यू विश टू सॉल्व द एग्जाम किट ऑफ कैपलिन that also have linked in the description box below so let's begin make sure that you have a paper a pen and a calculator and you are solving the questions and writing the notes along with me so in this video we'll be basically learning about how are we going to account the materials in the previous chapters you have seen what materials really are you saw the classification of the materials you saw the direct and indirect materials and stuff like that so now we'll be learning how to actually you know get into the accounting part of the same okay so what are we going to read in this accounting for inventory so valuation of inventory is something which we have done in f3 so i hope you remember that so we are going to read the eoq and the ebq methods and the control procedures so don't get confused we are going to see everything one by one okay so first what is the process of having an inventory in the first place you are going to order and then you are going to receive and then you are going to issue the inventory right in a manufacturing business inventory may be the largest item of cost the principal reasons why a business needs inventory are as follows so you know what an inventory is inventory is basically the materials factory right it acts as a buffer in times when there is an unusually high rate of consumption so sometimes what happens if you don't let's say that you ordered something and i uh, quickly manufacture it and give it to you again when i get the next order again i manufacture it and i give it to them but that's not an ideal way of working right you need to have a buffer you need to have the products ready so that as soon as someone orders you are able to dispatch the items you can't wait for someone to order and then start with the manufacturing process so obviously you need to have an inventory that acts as a buffer whenever there's a law where's a where there's a huge demand for your product you should be having a buffer right it enables the businesses to take advantage of quantity discounts by buying in bulk so you know about bulk discounts so when you buy some buy the raw materials in bulk you will be given trade discounts this is something which we've been doing so that's what they are saying the businesses can take advantages of seasonal and other price fluctuation so whenever there's an end of season sale you can buy the raw materials in bulk right any delay in production caused by lack of the parts is kept to a minimum so production processes will flow smoothly and efficiently it may be necessary to hold inventory for a technical reason for example some food items need to mature so there are some food items which you need to keep in your inventory until they mature right so these are the various reasons as to why we need to have an inventory in the first place it is essential that the material purchased is the most suitable for the intended purchase intended purpose when material is required it must be ordered received by the stores departments recorded issued to the manufacturing department that requires it and eventually paid for this process needs a great deal of paperwork and strict internal controls internal controls what are internal controls internal controls consists of full documentation and appropriate authorization of all the transactions movements of the materials all requisitions orders receipts and payments so that's the that's our method of internal control if control is to be maintained over purchasing it is necessary to ensure that only necessary items are purchased so you need to make sure that no unnecessary useless things are being purchased only the things which we, which are actually required only they are being purchased orders are placed with the most appropriate supplier after considering price and delivery details obviously you need to consider that you are choosing the best supplier for yourself according to your needs the goods that are actually received are the goods that were ordered in correct quantity and quality so you need to make sure that the goods which are being delivered to you are they the exact same product which you had ordered so that is something which you need to keep in mind the price paid for the good is correct so you need to also check that 
did you pay the exact price which was discussed with the supplier before so now these are the things which are extremely necessary to keep in mind and to confirm every time to ensure that all of this takes place requires a reliable system of checking and controls so naturally if you want all these criteria to match you need to have a reliable system of checking a proper and a valid system which checks and keeps the internal control in check right the procedures for ordering purchasing receiving materials are as follows now we are going to see how are we basically going to order a particular thing and how does it come to your um, office um, to your business and how you basically record the whole thing the whole procedure is discussed below i understand that it can be taking a toll on you because it's very theoretical but you need to do theory in order to start with the practical questions if you are not going to study all this then you won't be able to understand the practical aspect of the chapters right so we need to do this also moreover the pm the f5 um, i um yeah I, i'm not wrong i think it's f5 the pm paper also focuses on the details of the same topics so if you are not clear with the basics then you will be facing a problem then all right so don't get confused with this chart we'll be seeing everything in detail Okay. Okay. Let's just quickly see this. So this is my stores department. All right, stores department. First of all, the production department. Right, the production department is the department which uses the goods which I buy. Right. So the production department tells the store. orders from the stores department using using a good requ requisition note so the production department is ultimately the department which will be using the goods which i'm producing so my production department is going to go and um, give a goods requisition note to the stores department and it is going to tell the stores department that i need so and so goods okay so the production department will be giving a goods requisition note to the store department what will the store department then do the stores department will then uh, requisition goods from the purchasing department using a purchase requisition after the goods requisition um, uh, is taken by the stores department from the production department it gives a purchase requisition to the purchasing department and then what does the purchasing department do the purchasing department basically orders the goods using a purchase order who from whom will it order the goods it will order from the supplier from an external supplier all right so then the external supplier will deliver the goods to the store department and as soon as the external supplier submits um, delivers the goods or um, delivers the goods to the store's department it will submit a purchase invoice so a purchase invoice is always received by us and then as soon as we the store's department gets the goods it is going to give the goods to the production department so this is the whole cycle and i hope you are clear with it so whenever the production department requires goods it informs the stores department by giving a goods by giving a goods requisition note and then the stores department gives a purchase requisition to the purchase department then the purchase department will naturally order from an external supplier and then the external supplier will be providing the goods to the production department to the stores department and um, the stores department when uh, receives the goods and along with the goods the stores department also receives a invoice also receives a purchase invoice from my external supplier okay and then the stores department will deliver the goods to the production department who were originally the people who were in need of the goods so this is the cycle which we need to follow now let's quickly see the notes for the diagram goods and goods or materials requisition notes are issued by the production department the purpose is to authorize the storekeeper to release the goods which have been requisition they may be used to update the stores record a purchase requisition is completed by the stores department and sent to the purchasing department on receipt of the properly authorized requisition the purchasing the department will select a supplier and create an order on a purchase order form the purchase order is then sent to a supplier and copies are sent to the accounts department 
On the receipts of the good, the department will check the goods against the relevant purchase order and check for the delivery note which accompanies the goods. Full details of the goods are then entered onto a goods receipt notes. So when you are receiving a good, you put it in the goods receipt note. A copy of the goods received note is attached to the relevant purchase order and then it is sent to the purchasing department where they are matched to a relevant supplier. And once it is approved, the purchase invoice can be paid. Don't worry about all this. It's not going to be. Alright. Uh, where were we again? Yeah. The copy of the GRN. So the purchase invoice can be paid. Other documents, other documents that a business may encounter, material return notes, used to record any unused materials which are returned to the stores, material transfer notes, transferring the uh, materials from one department to another, goods return notes used to detail what is being returned to the supplier. So material return is when you are, the production department is returning the goods to the stores department and goods returned is when the stores department is returning the goods to the supplier itself. I hope you are clear with the difference between the material return and the goods return. Credit notes are received if the goods have been returned to supplier or there is a fault with the invoice. So you know what a debit and a credit note is. We've done it earlier. Okay, so these are how my specimen forms look. So this is how my requisition uh, forms are look. Quantity, description, material, job, delivery, purchase order. So this is how my um, requisition forms look like. This is how my purchase order looks like. You can pause and look at it if you want to. This is how my goods received note look like. And this is my material requisition note. Alright, let's begin with my test understanding one. A goods received note provides information used to update the inventory record. Naturally, whenever you receive goods, that is something you need to be recording in your goods received note. Right. Information to check that the correct price has been recorded on the supplier's invoice. So the goods received note has obviously has nothing to do with checking of the um, amount. Right. Information to check that the correct quantity of goods has been required on the supplies invoice again here we are talking about the quantity and not the price so on goods received note quantity is being mentioned and about price nothing is being mentioned so this is a correct information to record any unused materials which are returned to stores so unused materials that has nothing which is related to the goods received note so my first and the third option are correct Okay, take a moment and solve the test to understanding too. Then I will discuss with you. All right. The following documents are used within a cost accounting system. Which two documents are matched with the goods received in the buying process? Okay. One second. Where's my pen? Yeah. Invoice from the supplier. Obviously, you will be using the invoice for the supplier. Right. Purchase order. Am I going to use the purchase order? See, we are using, we are, we have to check in the buying process. So, obviously, purchasing order should be taken into consideration purchase requisition you're always going to look at the final document right when you actually buy a thing it is done using the purchase order and not the requisition stores requisition no the same thing again we are going to see the final document so invoice and purchase order so my answer is a the following documents are used in accounting for raw materials so what which of the documents can be used to update the store's ledger cards or for inventory? Alright, let's read the question again. 
the following are in accounting for the raw materials which of the documents can be used to update the store ledger cards for inventory okay so you want to update the store ledger cards and inventory so obviously my answer is going to be goods received note and the materials return notes why am i considering materials return notes because you need to see what are the materials which have been re returned in order to find the actual current value of the inventory okay now we come to an interesting part of the chapter where we are beginning with the formulas all right so we are going to see what is the inventory holding cost and what is the ordering cost what do you understand by these words when we are talking about holding cost we are talking about the storage costs when you are holding the inventory when you are keeping a stock of the inventory when you are in a way um keep in a hold of it so storing it the costs which are involved in that is known as the holding costs and what are the ordering costs ordering costs are when the costs which are involved in the ordering of the goods all right okay now let's start with costs of carrying inventory costs of carrying inventory irrespective of the nature of the business a certain amount of inventory will need to be held so no matter what the situation is you will always be acquiring you will always be having a holding cost so naturally you must be having some holding cost payment every year however holding inventory costs money and the principal trade off in an inventory holding situation is between the cost of acquiring and storing inventory and the level of service that the company wishes to provide so the total cost of having inventory consists of the following purchase price holding costs ordering costs stock out costs inventory recording system costs so these are the various types of costs which are involved and i do not want to go into the detail here because in the following chapters you would be going into the details of the same so when we reach the um, necessary detail part there i will be discussing everything with you okay so don't worry right now it is we'll just do them further okay so to begin with let's see what our holding cost is cost of holding an inventory so we always will be incurring some sort of cost which is for the purpose of the holding so holding cost can be distinguished between fixed holding cost and variable holding costs fixed holding costs include the cost fixed holding costs include the cost of storage space and the cost of insurance note that the cost of storage space may be a stepped fixed cost if increased warehousing is needed when higher volumes are held so now these are the things which are kind of which kind of come under the holding cost which are fixed in nature variable holding costs are like the interest in capital and stuff like that so now these are the things which are those kind of costs which are variable in nature now these are some things which we have studied in the costs classification chapter so if you are not clear here that means that you haven't watched that video so make sure that you watch that we come to the first formula of the chapter how to calculate the holding cost okay total annual holding cost is equal to holding cost per unit multiplied by average inventory listen there are way too many formulas in management accounting so you need to have a formula notebook and you need to note down the formulas and learn it with me i'll try my best to make you guys learn the formulas in the videos itself but you need to revise the formulas every single day and write them down all right so my first formula is my annual holding cost all right so my total annual holding cost so now you know what is the meaning of the holding cost right so cost which is incurred in order to hold a particular hold the inventory so what is the value of holding one unit in inventory so holding cost for one unit multiplied by the average inventory average inventory is always half of my inventory all right so total annual holding cost is equal to holding cost per unit 
multiplied by average inventory so this is my formula for total holding costs my total holding cost is holding cost per unit multiplied by average inventory so whenever you're talking about holding you need to know that it is the inventory holding cost so you need to know that you need to multiply it with the average inventory all right so now what is the formula of average inventory my average inventory is going to be just give me a second i've written the formula in an easier manner i'm trying to find that for you guys okay never mind we'll just learn from this for now and then if i find it i'll give you yeah so my average inventory is q upon 2 now what is q q is the orders well, how much you have actually ordered so how much you have ordered that many goods you will received right so what is my order quantity that is what they are saying so quantity divided by 2 is when you will get my average inventory what is quantity which is the quantity ordered when i'm saying quantity it is the quantity ordered or it is the total goods which i which i have placed the order to fill in my inventory all right so my total annual holding cost is holding cost per unit multiplied by average inventory and what is my average inventory it is order multiplied divided by 2 half of my order quantity right what is my order quantity order quantity is inventory only what goods i'm placing an order for that will come to my inventory only right so that is my formula for annual holding cost okay now we come to my cost of ordering inventory right now what we saw was the cost of holding inventory now we are going to see what are the costs of ordering the inventory again ordering cost per unit so it, this is very obvious right you need to know the ordering cost per unit for in order to find the total order as well so the cost of placing an order which is one order so cost of placing one order multiplied by the number of orders very simple cost of ordering inventory is the cost of placing one order multiplied by the total number of orders now how am i going to get my total number of orders so my total number of orders will always be given by d upon q now what is d upon q d is my annual demand so how much i am demanding for the good what is my demand for the good in one year annually how much demand it is divided by the q q is my again we have discussed q is my order quantity so how much i have ordered right again q is not my average inventory q upon 2 was my average inventory q is just my average inventory or q is just my number of goods i have ordered all right so what is the cost of ordering inventory total ordering inventory total annual ordering cost gives me order per unit multiplied by number of units where number of units are given by demand upon order quantity that is my formula for ordering inventory where the number of orders in a year is expected annual demand divided by the order quantity so i hope that is clear all right next so now we saw what cost of holding inventory is we also saw what called uh, we also saw what cost of ordering inventory is now what happens when i add the both let us wait pause the thought over there and let us see the further thing so my total annual cost of inventory so how do i find my total cost of inventory this what is this co multiplied by d upon q don't worry with this um full forms and all this is something you have done only so we have learned the full forms but they have given so this is cost of ordering one unit this is demand divided by q which is the number of units you know that and this is the cost of holding one unit and this is the q upon two which is my ordering cost divide ordering quantity divided by two which is my um average inventory so now how do i find the total annual cost of inventory so my total annual cost of inventory would be now what is this what is this this is my ordering cost 
so my total ordering cost plus my total holding cost these are the formulas of them right plus p multiplied by d will give me my total annual cost so you need to add the total holding cost you need to add the total ordering costs and you also need to add p multiplied by t d what is my p multiplied by d you know what d is d is my annual demand for the good right it will be given in the question now what is p p is my price of one good so price of one good multiplied by the annual demand plus the total holding costs plus the total ordering costs when you add these three you get the total annual cost of inventory all right so these are my three core formulas to begin with so i hope you have memorized them but let's just quickly write them so you have a formula sheet ready as well so my total holding cost let's begin with that I hope you are writing it along with me and learning it along with me. So my total holding cost is holding cost per unit multiplied by average inventory which is Q by 2. Very basic. Whenever you are talking about holding cost, it is something which is uh, related to my it is something which is related to my inventory. So I am using average inventory. So holding cost per unit is also written like this and Q by 2 is my average inventory. Alright and Q is my order quantity. You know that also right. Now we have discussed this so many times. Now let's see how to find out my total order costs. Total ordering costs. You know how to find that also we have discussed. So ordering costs. per unit co it's also written as co multiplied by the number of units how do i find my number of units demand multiplied by quantity so where d is my annual demand and q is my order quantity d upon q is my total number of units all right so my total holding costs are holding cost per unit multiplied by q upon 2 which is my average inventory and my cost of ordering inventory is cost of placing one order multiplied by number of orders and the number of orders are given by d upon q after finding out these two now tell me how to find the total annual costs so my total annual costs, my total annual costs will be given by P multiplied by D plus the total holding costs which we found out above and the total ordering costs which we found out above, right? Where P is my price per unit, P is my price per unit and my D is my annual demand. So these were very simple. Now I hope that you have learnt the formulas along with me and you are making the formula sheet also.